Hello everyone and welcome in this tutorial where we're going to see how we can dynamically change uh, targets that are being followed by our camera. Here we have a zombie catapulting another zombie, the camera starts following the other zombie, then the hammer head hits the robot and the robot flies. And uh, we're going to see how we can do this pretty easily. So first of all, our camera has a camera follow script. The camera follow script has a target, that's the target it follows, and has a reframe time and a reframe curve, so the amount of time it takes to reframe on the new target whenever we change it. And uh, the reframe curve is just uh, going to determine uh, how that reframing is going to happen, uh, in which it, does it accelerate, is it, does it bounce, or is it just linear? Um, it's, it's very configurable. Uh, we keep a reference to our own transform that we initialize in the start method. Uh, this is just to gain a little bit of CPU because whenever you call transform, you get you use get component, which is rather inefficient when you can just store the reference once and for all and then not call it again. Uh, we have the target offset. So the target offset is initialized also at the start and it's the difference of position between the camera's position and the target's position. Uh, and so we're going to make sure that whenever we change a target, we're going to reframe so that the camera is at the exact same offset compared to the other target. And then we have a current offset, which is, well, the current offset, we're going to, that's, that's how we actually um, reposition the camera. That's how we actually position the camera. So we have a set target method that's called and we can call it at the start. And the set target method is public and that's very important. We're gonna see why, because we wanna be able to change that uh, from the outside. So when we change a target, well, we set the current offset to be the camera's current position minus the target's position. And then we set the target, this target to be the new target we stop all coroutines because we have a reframing coroutine. We want, we want to make sure there is not one already running and then we start it. Uh, I'm going to look at updates in the end. Well, the update is very, very uh, simple. If we do have a target, we just set the camera's position to the target's position plus the current offset. So what the reframe coroutine is going to do is modify that current offset. Uh, so we take the initial current offset when we started to reframe, we store it in a from offset um, a vector. We store the elapsed, we initialize uh, elapsed time progress and we have a loop that keeps looping while we're not finished. And we do that by checking how, where the progress is if we are above one 100% uh, progress. So then we just increment elapsed with time or delta time. And then we say progress is elapsed divided by reframe time. Uh, actually, we could just do this uh, in the end here instead. There you go. So then we are going to change current offset. And we say that it's going to be the linear interpolation between our original offset before we started reframing and the target offset, that's the, that's the ideal offset we're looking to get. And instead of giving it uh, the progress as interpolation value, we're actually gonna use the reframe curve. We're gonna get the value of the reframe curve at progress. We use lerp unclamped and you're going to see later on why it can be useful, but you could also use lerp. The difference between both is that uh, if it's just a lerp, then the uh, interpolation progress is kind of clamped to one, where when it's unclamped, it can the value can actually be, no, it's not the progress, sorry, it's the value. So you can actually move beyond target offset and go back if necessary. Then we skip a frame and then we update the elapsed time and the progress. And then in the end, once we're done, we just make sure that 
whatever little offset there remains, we remove. So the current offset equals the target offset. Well, this is all pretty standard stuff, right? Uh, but now, how do we switch from one target to another? Uh, there could be lots of different ways to do this. I do this with triggers, and here's the little trick I use. I create triggers that I put just where the little objects are gonna be moving. Now, this might not work in every single case. You have to kind of adapt to what you need, but I'm gonna still show you how this works um, because these triggers are a little bit interesting. So I create an on trigger transform script and that on trigger transform script has a transform event. Now, transform event is a custom uh, unity event uh, that I made. So I have an event types namespace and I have uh, a int event for unit events of type int, float event for unit events of type float, etc., etc. I have this for game object transform and also game object interactions. Um, this is where I st store all the event types that I frequently might be using. Uh, it makes things a lot easier once you do that. So now let's go back to, I <laughs> have too many scripts open here, uh, to my on trigger transform here. So I have this transform event that's uh, an event, a unit event that returns, that uses a transform. Uh, I have a maximum amount of triggers after which I deactivate the game object. This is to avoid, for example, uh, when my zombie is catapulted, well, I don't want the catapult to be uh, followed. And then on trigger enter, I get the transform from the collider that collides, that enters the trigger and I invoke my on trigger transform with that. And then I check the trigger count and disable if necessary. So how this is all rigged up is my propelled zombie cam trigger here is going to then, when the trigger transform is triggered, uh, call the set target method on the camera follow script. And so that's gonna set the target to be the transform of the collider of my zombie. And then I have the same for the hammer and the same for, I call it the player, but it's, it's the robot. And that's how it works. So hope you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the curve. Um, so my main camera here, as you can see, my curve here goes actually beyond one. So my camera is not only just gonna catch up, it's actually gonna go a little beyond where it should go. So it nicely eases back in. Um, this is my personal preference. For your project, you might want something different. It all really depends. But I think that it, it actually gives kind of this smooth kind of movement. The camera goes a little bit beyond and then it catches up on the other side. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And if you did, don't hesitate to um, come back and see if I do some other stuff later.